I'm staring at a piece that I have no idea on which way to go with it. So we're going to go on this journey together. Stick around. I have a trick. <laughs> of why you never know what might be inside of a tree and this piece was apparently split off which forces you to go in a different direction than what you might have been envisioning right off the bat so seeing that that's the case we're going to do something that will accommodate for this branch, whatever you want to call this piece of wood, and it's going to be special. I guarantee you. First thing I'm going to do is mount it on the lathe, but mount it on the lathe on a very different orientation than uh, what I have done in the past. I've actually done this a long time ago with one turning that I did. And uh, I don't, you might have not seen it. You might have. Yes, I'm going to mount it kitty corner on the log. So I'm going to make a couple of small preps. I'm going to make a small flat part on opposite ends. That's all I did. Just give it a little bit of a flat part so I'm right I'm not right on the edge of the piece. One there and one from my life center. And it really doesn't matter which one I set up over there first. Trying to balance it out and roughly when you do this you start with a piece that's fairly the same length as it is its diameter. This cut is still shorter from here than it is to the back side. Don't know if uh, I'm explaining that right but from the center to here I got about the same about the same amount that I got to both sides. And uh, when I look at this, again, I got about the same amount here as well. Probably a little extra. I'm going to just offset it slightly. Okay, and this is uh, river birch. So I'm ready to go with this. I'm gonna center that up a little bit better on my cut. That's better. That spur drive is embedded in pretty well, both top and bottom, and making good contact. Plenty of pressure in the uh, in the piece, and I'm gonna start it up. Oh, probably around 400 RPM. But with that, I also will check, uh, and I will see if that's a good speed to go. 
And what's going to happen is I'm going to true this up and make a tenon over here. And this is going to be a ball. Hopefully, I got enough to uh, make a decent size. Five hundred RPM. I'm turning guys and I'm seeing, seeing this ghost image that you see right over there that right there that line is the solid piece of the wood that you see going through where you don't have any translucent uh, I think you can uh, see that so I'm aiming towards that part because I know that by then I will be on solid wood You see that I'm pretty close to it. That's basically the line that becomes solid. It's right about there. So all this out here, I'm clearing it away. Now with that solid line, you can get an indication of what it is that you want to make. And I said right off the bat that I want to create it like a ball. And I'm turning this and I'm thinking slightly different. So again, it, we always have the luxury or the opportunity to change our mind and seeing what's developed, developing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a wide bottom, small hollow vessel with a skinny neck on the top on a side orientation. I might leave some of the, I was thinking I was going to leave some of the bark, but because of this, I might not at all because of that flat part, because I got to go all the way up into it until it starts hitting that. And by the time I hit that, the bark will most likely be gone. Don't forget, it's important for you to stop and see what's developing because you might have something that's unique at the point that you're in or at the state that you're in. So never rush to get to your point B without looking at what's developing.
on my head, I knew which direction I was going. And you can see that I'm somewhat being careful around this area. And the, why am I being careful around this area? I'll tell you why. Because I'm looking at the possibility of maintaining this, this piece, ring, going through here before creating the mount. So, don't know if it will work, I don't know if it will look good, but rather than take it off right from the bat, right off the bat, and not explore the possibilities that the piece offers, I will let it develop and see if in fact it's something that I want to maintain. Now I could also, looking at what I got here, and I kind of like what I got here, maintain this as the mouthpiece and just develop this and make this the base of the, the vase. That is why we should never come up with a solid decision as to what we're doing. I like this shape and that's what's prompting me to change my mind and saying, wait a minute, no, this is going to be the mouth and this will be the base. And I can keep bringing this down and maintain this base a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be overwhelming and given more to the base itself. So let's see still what is developing with this piece as I go along. So I'm going to bring it down another inch from this top lip, regardless before I decide on what I do. And if I want to make that the, the mount as originally designed, I can still do that. But once I take that off, that's the end of the design options to the piece. going to make a tenon on this back side of this.
I'm gonna go in here and uh, stop bringing it up and create a tenon. And that's the rules to a tenon is that you make it the right size sit it nice and square I'll retrue this up a little bit.
if you got a steady rest, use it whenever you're making bases. If you don't have one, well, you know, I, I myself, I procrastinate and uh, don't jump on uh, making shop things right away. But when you have a chance, you should uh, look at somebody's videos and get some ideas on how to make them. Uh, mine's is uh, pretty much like everybody else's. I make made small modifications. If you like my modifications, which is uh, the track being sandwiched in a mirror, um, you can check on how I did my my steady rest. Uh, it's on there, but. It, they all work the same, whether if you follow my style or come up with the outside, whether if you go all wood or, you know, the only thing you need is uh, some uh, rubber wheels from uh, some roller blades or something of that sort. I've got a pair, I think a Goodwill or Habitat for Humanity, whatever it was, I don't even remember, but like for five dollars and uh, giving me more wheels than I need mine was a uh, rollerblade so it had four wheels uh, in a straight line time to go in there and uh, hollow this out no sense killing yourself if you don't need to Started off the easy way, which is to use a, a plaster bit, any type of a, a drill bit, and drill the center of it. The base, I think, did a nice job. It, uh, it makes the piece mysterious as to how it came about. Uh, this little chip over here, well, yeah, I wasn't looking forward to that. I could chip it all off or leave it the way it is, which looks like a mistake. So I don't like doing it that way. Or I could take it down to this bottom eliminating that and on this case because I don't have anything else to complement that 
I'm going to do that. I'm going to take it all the way down. And just leave it. And just leave a little nub on that. Uh, won't lose anything by that. And that is fine. Instead of beveling it out, I'm gonna bevel it in. Drawing the eye to the inside. One more highlight for this. With this, I'm just gonna go straight in, not wiggle it back and forth, and uh, create a little bit of a, a pattern on this. And of course, border it off. Scene. This is sanded with 80 grit and fine steel wool. And to finish it off, I'm going to apply a little bit of Yorkshire grit. Okay, so I finished buffing it and uh, Again, I forgot to turn the camera on. A lot of good it did me talking about the steps on this. Um, but anyway, just uh, finished up the base. It's time to go in there and uh, maybe put my seal of approval on this one. Here it is. 
nice small vase oriented at a 45 degree pit down here on this side and the other pit would have been right here uh, it's not defined but it's actually right there so on this particular case it didn't do a lot other than put the rings going up in this orientation here and on this orientation on the top like I said if it's a piece of wood that has pronunciation a lot of character to it this is a nice technique to follow the uh, shape well that's exactly the way that it should be it should not be uniform it should be very jaggered because you are just taking it from kitty corner to kitty corner the uh, inside looks good all the way down thickness is okay um, I could have spent a little bit more time and made it a little bit thinner it's about half inch on these outside walls but the finish is nice uh, it's fairly smooth that little piece of bark really does add to the piece in my opinion and then this bottom edge is natural and the question is how does it sit it sits beautifully and that's the piece decided to go with this uh, little uh, highlighted ring going through here with my uh, Sarsby uh, tool a little bit uh, expensive uh, in my opinion for how much I use it um, I bought it and I use it maybe five times since last year I bought it for Christmas oh I got it for Christmas um, so not a tool that I use a lot and you know it makes me wonder sometimes if we indulge ourselves with late tools just to say that we have it then rather than we need it and it's like every, everything else everything has a certain amount of factor which is uh, of need but the majority of it is because we want it because somebody else has it whether if uh, it's something you can work with uh, you know or do creations without it and my motto is still you can probably do without if you need to thanks for watching <laughs> we'll see you on the next one very soon i hope take care